So we're here at the uh, Insel Facade Testing Laboratory. We've got behind us a massive wind tunnel. Uh, biggest thing of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere, as far as we're aware. A yeah, big question I get a lot is, um, what's this for? Uh, key main reason is risk mitigation. So in our game, a fatality due to the fa failure of one of our products would be, um, you know, it'd be catastrophic and it's a, it's a huge risk. Single biggest risk we face in our business. The engineering of these things though is it's become more and more of a challenge as they become more popular. That's largely driven by increasing population, increasing density and the increasing need for energy efficiency in buildings and privacy due to density of living and proximity as well as the need for aesthetics because of general environment that we want to live in. The engineering standards and guidelines that are available don't really deal with these porous protrusions from buildings. Um, they, you know, th there's some available in the, for example, the AWES um, Wind Engineering Handbook to 1170. Uh, there's some in 1170, but there's no real specific guidance about how to consider the loading on on some of these very complex architectural features. It tends to lead to a lot of confusion around um, what loading they can actually handle and what loading should actually be applied. Another area of risk that we face is wind noise. So if we were to design a facade screening system for a building that happened to be a hotel, for example, and under heavy wind conditions that would generate a lot of noise. You can imagine that on a, in a hotel type building, uh, the significant risk that's faced there if people can't sleep, the hotel operator gets bad reviews on TripAdvisor. Where does that risk end in terms of design and, um, and engineering? This facility is designed to answer those problems. The demand for these screening systems is increasing, projects becoming larger and more complex and it's driven by that density of living. Another key aspect is education. So any failures that we're aware of that have happened, a key element of that failure is due to a lack of education. And that might be at the level of the installer on site, it might be at the level of our designers, it might be at the level of the architecture consultants or the level of the engineering consultants or right at the top of the chain with the developer, owner, investor and it's a, it's a tricky area because wind engineering tends to be a bit of a black art. It's a bit of a combination between mechanical and structural disciplines. Um, the aeronautical people are very familiar with it, but it doesn't really get applied to buildings very often. We feel that greater education for the man on the tools, right through to the client and the consultant group, uh, the builders as well, we feel that would be a positive thing for the building industry across the board, as well as definitely for our company. So the key things we want to know when we are uh, working on one of these complex architectural facades, is it safe? Can we break it or is it noisy? So what are we testing today? Um, what we've got on the turntable here, uh, this is a balustrade. Now it's a replica of one that has caused a lot of trouble on a project in Auckland in the past. Um, when we get the fans going you'll see it makes quite a lot of noise. And moving around here, uh, this is a just a fairly commonly, readily available perforated sheet metal product. Uh, this was uh, used all over a large hospital uh, car park building in Sydney and uh, they had to create some, they had to test, the, um, test it in a wind tunnel to check the uh, what sort of mitigating strategies would, would stop the noise that it was making because it makes a very, very high-pitched um, squealing kind of noise under certain wind conditions. And then round here, a um, 
fairly typical um, louver installation with um, rear fit mounting brackets and <clears throat> it's just really to show the difference in, in wind loading at the, the top louver compared to the rest of them. So if you left it running long enough that top louver would blow off um, but you can see movement in it when you get some very high wind speeds that it's obviously getting a, a, a more of a, a more of a hiding more wind pressure on the top louver than the others. So what I'm going to do now is uh, start run, turning that turntable. Uh, we'll bring it through about 40 degrees. We've currently got wind coming out of the out of the end of the tunnel at approximately 60 kilometres an hour. So that, that's a continuous flow, but the very common gust speed that you would get, um, particularly at high levels, um, as it comes around, you'll be able to hear the, tone, the, the the balustrade will start making a bit of noise. The tones will change. changes in tone as it moves around. It gets quite ear piercing after a little while. You can imagine that would be very irritating to have on your balcony, your apartment block. It would be a very irritating thing to slick next to. Doesn't seem to be vibrating a lot. Seems to be a um, aerodynamic effect of the air through here, a bit like a musical instrument that's creating that noise. So that noise you can hear now is what you'd hear inside a, a bedroom or, or a hotel room um, that's coming through double glazed windows and insulated panel. And it'd be, be quite irritating, very difficult to sleep next to. Um, bear in mind that's in a consistent wind flow out there with your standard turbulent gusting effect, it would go up and down, it would get worse, better. The, the variations would be very, very distracting and disconcerting, sleep depriving. Okay, so we're going to bring it around another 40 degrees now um, so that that perforated sheet metal is uh, perpendicular to the wind flow and it begins producing a very high pitched sort of a squeal, um, quite, quite annoying. Um, very, uh, very penetrating sort of a noise. It's coming around now, you can hear it starting to make the odd squeal. It gets quite persistent. You can hear there, it's um, be very, very penetrating, uh, very, very high pitched very disconcerting to be to be next to. Certainly not something you'd want on the outside of your building. Yeah, so we're going to bring this round um, so that the blank wall is perpendicular to the wind flow with those louvers on it and it'll just demonstrate the additional movement that the, that the top louver is getting due to the additional pressure um, that you'll find at the top louver as opposed to the, the ones lower down. So once it's around there, we're going to lock the turntable um, and wind the wind speed up. Um, so we'll, we'll bring it up to you know, 150 kilometres an hour, thereabouts. Um, we may go a bit further, we can do 200. To answer another question that I get a lot, um, what service offering are we going to be putting forward with this? Is it just for ourselves or is it available for the wider market? So um, to answer that very shortly, yes it is available to the wider market as a facility for hire, however only the building industry. It isn't designed or um, intended to be used in automotive or, or anything else, it's specifically set up for uh, testing and engineering construction related elements. Um, we will also be offering to 
facade engineers uh, a service of constructing a mock-up to their specifications, testing it to their specifications and providing the raw data. Um, or lastly, for some, in some instances, we will provide a full design, construct a mock-up, carry out that testing and provide engineering certifications such as a producer statement as to how that system will work. So what we've shown today is just a very small demonstration of the capabilities of this machine and what we can achieve in testing porous facade elements. So if there's any projects uh, that you may have need of this service in, feel free to get in touch and reach out to the team at Insole.